I've been playing Call of Duty Zombies for just over 10 years now, and when I first started, oh boy was I bad. My average round on solo was about 10 or 11 for the first 3 to 4 months of me playing. Needless to say, I improved over time, and since the content of Zombies nowadays is much more focused on challenges, detailed gameplays, high rounds, etc, I thought I'd make a video designed to help out those who want to get better or even start out playing Zombies for the very first time. The concept of being good at the game is entirely subjective, however a player I would consider to be good at zombies would be able to perform the core functions of a map to a 100% success rate, which is exactly what I'm going to be teaching you in this video. If you find this at all helpful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing, as I make weekly Call of Duty Zombies videos that perhaps can help you learn specific maps that you enjoy and want to improve at. Just as a quick disclaimer, I'm not going to discuss budget. This video is assuming that you already own a COD Zombies game. However, if you want my recommendation to start out, the Zombies Chronicles Steam Bundle is your best bet. Although I recommend waiting for a Steam sale on the bundle as it's certainly not cheap. But if you intend on learning the game and are really interested, I'd argue it's well worth your money. As well as the fact that all Black Ops 3 Zombies DLC maps, including the Giant, are available for a very low price comparative to other Call of Duty Zombies games. It can certainly seem overwhelming with over 72 total maps including remasters. You might be wondering where to start. I'm going to go through and give you the best map for each COD Zombies game to play. However, only the ones I recommend you to start with as some games are overall a lot more difficult than others. So it provides you with a refreshing and not overwhelming learning process to improve. First, I'm going to give a definition for a few phrases I use throughout this video. Hits. The amount of times it takes for a zombie to down the player. The main rule of thumb is it's two hits to go down and four with the juggernaut perk. However, in Black Ops 3, this is three hits to go down and five with juggernaut. Down or downed. A state in which the player must be revived in order to continue playing before bleeding out and having to either respawn the next round or restart their game. Points. The currency of each zombie's map. You spawn in with 500 points. When damaging a zombie, you gain 10 points per bullet or melee, unless they die, in which it will give 50 points for a regular lethal kill, 60 for a torso kill, 70 for a neck kill, 100 for a headshot kill, and 130 for a melee kill. However, as rounds progress, it's more efficient to focus on aiming for the head. As melee hits required to kill a zombie, increase by one every single round, as well as the zombie health increasing. So it is the fastest and safest way to kill a zombie other than using a wonder weapon or some kind of special equipment. Training. Running around in circles or figure of eight motions to get the zombies to follow you around until they start grouping together but are unable to hit you because they're all behind you. Allowing you easier access to fire into them with your weapons and not risk getting snuck up from behind. Creating a safe distance between the player and the zombies. Training spot. A location around the zombies map you're playing in which you perform the previous training technique and there's usually one or two best spots per map. Wonder weapon. A special powerful gun or utility that makes the player feel incredibly strong while wielding it. Easter egg. The main story focused quest that is usually the focus of most advanced zombies players gameplay when playing a map. Mystery box. A helpful feature in the map that costs 950 points and cycles through different weapons, utility and the wonder weapon, allowing you to collect whatever it lands on. Perks. Purchasable bonuses that give you strength depending on which one you buy. The most influential in this video being Juggernog, providing you extra health and quick revive which on solo revives you once you go down, but you lose it once you're alive again and requires you to repurchase up to a maximum of three times for four total downs. Pack-a-Punch, a utility that costs 5,000 points to upgrade your weapon. Camping, sitting in one location where all the zombies come in a direction that allows you to hit them all at once before they can reach you. Mini boss zombies, Special zombies that spawn every few rounds, have increased health and deal more damage, as well as having potentially some form of bonus ability to impair the player. Dog rounds. Every five or so rounds, hellhounds will spawn in on specific maps, giving the player a max ammo after defeating them. This round is not difficult at all and should be considered a breathing space to refresh and collect yourself to prepare for future rounds. Replayability. 
The aspect of wanting to play the map over and over again because it's enjoyable and the features don't have a super high learning curve. Macro. General aspects of a game that you need to know in order to perform basic functions. This would include perks, upgrading your weapon, and turning on the power, as well as obviously a bunch of other things too. Micro. More detailed pieces of information that you might need but aren't as essential for succeeding when playing. For example, shooting zombies in the head or meleeing for the maximum amount of points or damage. You can still play the game as normal without having to maximize every single detail of your gameplay. So, now onto the best maps per game I recommend you to try. World at War, Nacta and Toten. You might be wondering why not Darice? And the simple answer to that is, the other maps are quite buggy, including the perks. But not only is it where a lot of people originally started with the game mode, but it's small enough to give you the grand overview of how the game actually works due to the lack of micro. You see a zombie, you shoot it, you get points, you open a door, buy the mystery box, and you just survive as long as you can. There's no crazy easter egg, no wonder weapon other than the ray gun in the mystery box, and no really good training spot. So it allows you to really learn in a progressive but enjoyable way to prepare you for the more advanced maps. This map also has a lot of replayability, as since there's no Juggernaug, you down in two hits. But because the map is so small, it's as simple as waiting another five minutes to get back to where you probably were before. So overall, Nact is an incredibly solid, bare bones starter map if World at War is your game of choice. Black Ops 1, Ascension. Ascension is a very easy map, for the average Zombies player, and that's no exception to the newer ones either. However, the reason I chose this map over Kino de Toten and the rest of Black Ops 1 is entirely down to the monkeys, providing an element of frustration and punishment by not doing a simple task, that being killing the monkeys before you lose your perks one by one. It allows you to consider more than just the survival variable, while also being incredibly simple during the downtime between the monkey rounds. Similar to how Nact teaches you the basic macro of the game. Monkey rounds will typically occur once every five rounds and are no more difficult than dog rounds, but they will seek out and attack any perk machine in which you already have that perk. So you have to be quick to stop them before you lose them all. Ascension opens up the concept of training. At the Lunar Lander next to PhD Flopper, you're gifted with one of the single most open areas to train the zombies around in any Call of Duty map to date. A blessing for anyone wanting to learn the game, as they can just rinse and repeat training until they're really good at it, while also considering the factor of monkeys every five rounds, gaining the skill of pre-round mental preparation. In other words, preparing for a round in advance. Additionally, perks are easy to find and Pack-a-Punch only requires you to use all three Lunar Landers in order to obtain. All that being said, I still haven't mentioned the Wonder Weapon, the Thunder Gun, which can be collected via the Mystery Box, completely one-shotting an entire group of zombies with a single shot. So if you use the training skills taught previously in this video, you'll be absolutely golden on this map, and it'll be fairly difficult to actually go down once fully set up. Black Ops 2 Town. I personally started with town survival on Black Ops 2. Power is automatically turned on from the moment you spawn in. It has all the perks, the Pack-a-Punch right in the center of the map, and being a relatively small map, it is certainly a breath of fresh air to try and learn the core mechanics of the game. With multiple camping spots as well as training, training being the preferred method of playing the game, as even if you can camp and get to a higher round than you would without camping, it really doesn't provide you with any learnable skill moving forward as you play future maps. Town has no mini boss zombies, no dog rounds, and no main easter egg, so the progression is all very linear, easy to repeat, and the setup time is no more than 20 minutes. The only wonder weapon on this map is the ray gun, however if you own Buried, then you'll also have the ray gun mark 2 in the mystery box. But even without them, if you're looking to improve your basic skills, you don't need a ray gun, you can definitely do it with any gun provided to you on this map. Black Ops 3, The Giant. I'm not going to mention Gobblegums because this video is about learning the main aspects of the game from the ground up, and since they're considered controversial due to some being rather overpowered, I decided to not discuss them at all. 
Unlike its counterpart Doris in World of War, the Black Ops 3 gameplay system of a 3 hit down provides the player with a much easier time to be able to learn any of the previous macro steps mentioned in other games. All perks on the map except for Juggernaug are random however, but the locations will be shown later in this video. The power is only locked behind around 3 doors, making it relatively easy to obtain. Unlocking the Pack-a-Punch is simple, you use all three teleporters on the map, the map itself being an easy to learn layout as all three teleporters branch off from the starting room, making it easy to return to the center if the player gets lost. The catwalk is a great camping location, however the training spots around the map are relatively easy, but require you to maintain some level of focus to avoid downing. It's certainly not as easy as say ascension to train, but because of the three hit system, it overall becomes slightly more forgiving. The wonder weapon of this map is the Wonder Wolf DG2, obtained in the mystery box. There's a reason why each of these maps mentioned only uses the mystery box, as I don't want new players worrying about easter egg quests. It's an electric weapon that with each shot, stuns and kills around 10 zombies. Needless to say, this map is probably the single best on the list. The reason I'm not including Cold War, Black Ops 4, Infinite Warfare and World War 2 in this video is purely because the game after Black Ops 3 really began to limit test changing the core mechanics of the game. So for the purpose of this video, I will not be including them. Also, I didn't include Exo Zombies or Vanguard because frankly, they're too niche of an experience. Now I'm going to provide gameplay of each of the maps listed prior, explaining exactly how to turn on the power, locate the perks, unlock Pack-a-Punch, if it's on that map, and any additional information that might be useful. So when you first load into Nectar and Toten, you're just in this really long room. All the zombies will slowly start to spawn, as you can see, outside of the map. Now what you want to do is be careful, but knife into the zombies to get the maximum amount of points. Also, you can rebuild the barriers to get 10 points per barrier rebuilt. Now, it's my personal advice that you keep this door up here shut because up there isn't necessarily the most efficient way to make this map easier. You want to open up this help door or hell. I mean, some people say it's hell, some people say it's help, but it costs 1000. So you need to, of course, get a lot of melee kills. But when you're meleeing at the barrier itself, you want to be careful because if the zombie hits you on the other side of the barrier, they can actually down you. So if you get hit, just back up for a second and then continue to melee. Now the zombies actually do take a while to spawn in on this map, but once they do, as you can see, the round on the bottom left will change over. You also have these barrels outside the map that you can shoot. And once you shoot them enough, they will explode. So they can be useful if you get in a sticky situation and you want to kill a large portion of zombies around outside. However, you don't get points for this. So on round two, because the zombies have a little bit more health, you can't actually melee one shot them anymore. So you need to put a few bullets into them first. I recommend six per zombie. And once they're weak enough, you can melee and they die. So again, six shots into the zombie, knife, and then they're dead. Now, once you have around 1,950 points, you want to go ahead and open this help door. Now, I personally recommend leaving this door up here shut as well, because really you only need to open this one door to be able to function in the map. Go ahead and purchase the mystery box. This will give you a random weapon. As you can see, there's a ray gun in there. Oh, of course, my box luck is absolutely awful, so I got a Panzer Shrek, but you can get a variety of different weapons from the box. Alternatively, if you don't want to risk the RNG, which just means random number generator, so randomly generating a gun from the box, then you can come over here and purchase the Thompson for 1,500 points when you have enough. Because this is by far the most reliable gun to get every single time when playing on this map. Now, something I'll briefly mention because I didn't say it beforehand, but when playing zombies, you do actually get power-ups or drops from the zombies when you kill them occasionally. Not always, but you have a variety of different ones you can get. There's max ammo, which gives you full ammo in both your guns. Insta-kill, which of course makes everything a one-hit kill. Double points, which obviously doubles your points that you gain when shooting or rebuilding barriers. Literally anything, it doubles all the points. Carpenter, which rebuilds all barriers around the map. And I believe on World of War, that's the only drops that you can actually get. But on other games, you can have fire sails, which only spawn after you've hit the mystery box enough to give you a teddy bear, which means the box is just moving location. And that basically makes the box 10 points and all box locations are active. So yeah, as you can see here, we've got an insta kill. So meleeing is still a one hit now. And of course, I forgot the nuke. 
which will just kill every existing zombie on the map at that time. So it can be very useful. It only gives 400 points, however, so if you're looking to get points, then I suggest not really picking it up unless you're really, really in danger. I'll just showcase this weapon real quick because this is definitely by far the most reliable weapon in the game that you can just go ahead and purchase, and that's the Thompson on the wall here. Additionally, because it's a wall weapon, you can buy ammo for 600 points, which is incredibly good. And quickly before we move on to the next map as well, is I'll show you guys how to train on Nectar and Toten because... It can be a little bit difficult, but you essentially just want to run around in circles in this area here. So as the zombies appear here, you can take little risky spots like that, try to get through tight areas of the training spot. But you want to use these pillars to make a figure of eight motion. You can just go around one by one. And as you can see, all the zombies are piling up, but they're not able to hit me. And if there's a zombie right there, you just want to come all the way, hug the walls, make sure you don't get stuck run around, and as you can see, not a single zombie has been able to hit me. Even though we have about 20 over there. And then when you're ready, you just shoot into all of them. We get a double points here, as you can see. So this doubles all the points that we gain. Try to aim for the head if you want to kill the zombies as fast as possible. And yeah, that's basically it for Nectar and Toten. So for Ascension, when you spawn in, you'll be on one of these Lunar Landers, and it will just take you down into this Cosmodrome area. Now, of course, the power isn't turned on on this map, unlike Nactar and Toten, because the map is so small it doesn't need power, and also the mystery box doesn't require power anyway. So what you want to do is come over here, buy this Quick Revive perk, because Quick Revive on Solo, as mentioned before, will revive you if you end up going down. So if you're not super confident, having it in your back pocket can definitely be a bit of a confidence boost, because, you know, if you have Quick Revive, then you don't have to worry about if you go down, your game will just end. So we're going to go ahead and melee all the zombies. Again, if you're getting hit, just back up slightly. As it is a two hit kill, so you don't want to accidentally go down. I suggest saving your ammo until round two. Because since meleeing is a one hit anyway, it's just more efficient that way. Once you get onto round two, you want to do what you did for Nectar and Toten, which is shoot all the zombies six times and then melee. That way you're maximizing the amount of points because you're getting 60 from each shot and then 130 from the melee kill. So you're getting around 190 points per zombie. Now, I didn't mention this before, but you can absolutely play all of these maps to learn or choose one. It's totally up to preference, but it just depends a lot on whether or not you have the particular game or not. So as you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, melee. Now, when you melee, you don't want to really move forward because if they accidentally drop a drop of some kind, a power up, then you don't want to pick it up unless it's something good. So six shots, melee, and yeah, as you can see here, perfect. So the nuke spawned in because we killed that zombie. Now, if we picked up this nuke, we'd get 400 points, but it would end the round completely. Whereas for all these zombies, we're going to get probably more than 400 points. So if we can, just go ahead and melee all of them, kill them fast enough. Oh, we actually got a death machine. But go ahead and pick up the nuke. And then you get the 400 points at the end of the round instead, which is extremely helpful. Now, unfortunately, Black Ops 1 Death Machine, you actually can't take it away. But this is a drop exclusive to Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3 in this video. So it essentially just gives you a mini gun and you can just fire it around. It one shots pretty much. And it's extremely strong, but you don't get many points for it. So because you have enough points now, you want to go ahead and open this door up here. We want to head around the corner here. You'll see these electric symbols these are basically telling you where the power is the power is going to be on the other side of here around the corner but because we don't have any ammo right now we want to go ahead and pick up this mp5k because it's a very solid weapon on black ops 1 and just go ahead and go for headshots meleeing right now would be a little bit too risky but also we're going to showcase this is a training spot i was talking about so this is where one of the lunar landers will be but we need to turn the power on first this is the massive spot that you can just train around the zombies and they basically can't touch you. I mean, look how big this is. Ideally, you want to make sure the Lunar Lander isn't at this location, because if it is, then you'll have to run around it. You can't run through it, so it'll make training a little bit more difficult, but not really. But yeah, you just want to run around in a circle, either clockwise, counterclockwise, figure of eight motion, hug the walls when necessary but remember that there's a door right here or like a little doorway so zombies could of course spawn in that barrier there and then 
sneakily be waiting here while you're hugging this wall and it could be risky. Now, one thing that you can also do, which I didn't really mention before, is ideally you want to leave one zombie whenever you want to be doing things around the map because when there's only one zombie left if it's on round three or below then they will just be at walking or shambling speed like this so they're not running they're not sprinting they're really easy to deal with and there's just the one so we want to go ahead and open this door and power is actually going to be on the roof here but because we don't quite have enough points we're not going to be able to open the door sadly because as you can see it's 1000 so what we can do is we have one zombie to maximize points on this zombie, we're going to shoot it eight times because we're on round three. One for good luck and then melee. And now, as you can see, we have enough points. We go ahead, upstairs, open this door right here, and the power switch will be right here for you to turn on. Mystery box is right there. The thunder gun, of course, being in the mystery box. But now you want to run down, and because we don't want to be stuck inside, because it can be risky when zombies are spawning, as you can see here, you know, you don't want to get cramped and stuck in one small tight area. You can now activate Lunar Lander stations, which is good because we'll need to do all three to unlock the pack punch. But you just want to stay up here. You don't have to train just yet because your guns will be strong enough to be able to kill them before they can actually become a threat. Although if you want to practice this early on, then you're perfectly welcome to. You just want to get a bunch of kills until you have enough points. Uh, so we have a double points right here. That's going to be super helpful. Now, if you accidentally run out of ammo, remember that you can just run down to the MP5K wall by over there. And you can just purchase ammo. Now, on round four, the very last zombie will actually be sprinting. Oh, and we've got a max ammo drop. That's super helpful. It means we don't have to buy ammo. And we got an insta kill. Okay, we're getting all the drops, apparently. But the very last zombie will be sprinting on round four. Never mind, ignore what I just said, because apparently that one was just walking. Um, okay. Normally, they will be sprinting on round four if it's the very last zombie. But, ah, here we go. Okay, so we have monkeys. The monkey round, it can be a bit scary. But essentially, it spawns in a bunch of tiny monkeys. In these little lunar lander crash things. You want to shoot them as soon as you see them. But the only perk we have right now is quick revive. So we want to run down to the quick revive machine and defend it because these monkeys are going to try to take this quick revive machine and we do not want that. Also another thing to be careful of, this thing will spin and it will absolutely destroy you if you're in the radius so you want to be avoiding that. But we just wait for these monkeys to come. If you have more than one perk then as you can tell it would get more and more difficult to defend all the perks. But boom, as you can see, we got a max ammo. We also got a perk because we didn't let them touch the perks at all. So you can get a free perk from killing all the monkeys if they don't touch a perk once. Or I think if they don't take a perk once, although I'm not 100% certain on that. But we now have enough to purchase the Juggernog perk. Now this is a little risky because we're in the middle of the round. We got PhD Flopper on the bottom left, which basically just means when you dolphin dive, you make an explosion and you're immune to explosive damage, but Juggernog is right down here. You want to purchase this as soon as possible, as soon as you have the points, because this basically makes it so that you take four hits to go down instead of two, which is absolutely amazing. So now we have Jug, we're feeling a lot safer. Now the very easy thing is the fact that all the zombies are pretty much lining up one by one, as you can see in like a straight line. So it makes it very easy to go for headshots, which of course are giving you 100 points per. Very useful. We've got a carpenter drop right here, which will definitely be useful. Just gives us 200 points and rebuilds all the barriers. Oh, we've got a double points at the end of the round. That's a shame. But yeah, we've got one zombie here. I believe it will be the last one. But what you want to do is, if you are running low on ammo like I am, and of course we've got the starting pistol here, because we have PhD flopper, which is right next to the lunar lander we were just training at, and where you'll be spending most of the time on this game, you can absolutely keep the starting pistol until you want to pack a punch it because PhD flopper reduces all explosive damage. And when you pack a punch the starting pistol, it becomes two pistols that are basically like instant impact grenades when you fire them. So you can absolutely keep it. So if you get a really good gun like the org, you want to trade out the MP5K, you can keep the 1911. But this is only if you have PhD. If not, you can absolutely swap it out. But for the purpose of this particular gameplay, since we have PhD, we'll keep it. You want to go ahead and, since we're going to be showcasing... Oh, also another thing I want to mention, if you run too far away from the zombie, it can actually despawn. So, to prevent this, I suggest just letting it hit you once. 
every so often. But we're calling in this Lunar Lander. It should be arriving fairly soon. Make sure the zombie is far enough away so that it doesn't accidentally kill it. And what you want to do is once it lands, you want to go on top of it. Just buy for 250 points and it will take you all the way back to spawn. And you'll have to repeat this twice more to be able to unlock the Pack-a-Punch. Now, even though we don't have it unlocked, we'll go ahead and open this door right here, which is just past the power door and the Juggernaut area. As you can see on the wall here, this is the Pack-a-Punch machine. It's basically telling us that it's going to be in this area. Now, actually, this is kind of unique to this map because I don't believe there are these symbols on any other map, but I could be wrong. But the Pack-a-Punch machine is on the other side of this door here. And this will not open, as you can see, it's just through there. This will not open until we've used all three Lunar Landers. Now, as you can see up here, just on these stairs, you can come up, there's mule kick on the wall here. This will basically give you the ability to take a third gun. Up here, this takes us to the other side of power. So if you wanted to go this way for some reason, then you know you can. But this is the area we want to be looking at. So there's a door right here that costs 1250 points. Now we can't quite afford it. The zombie is fairly strong. So if we put enough bullets into him with the 1911, because it's very weak, And then we go ahead and melee. Boom, we actually have enough. So, you want to open this door. Speed Cola will be right here. This helps you reload your gun faster. Now, each map has a four perk limit, which is quite a shame. But, we'll call the lander to the position. This is the second one. You want to wait around here. Now, it might be a little bit risky because, yeah, it's the middle of the round. But because all the barriers should be up anyway, since it's a new area, you're not in much danger. Now, we only have 60 points. So, what you want to do is get... 250 points as quick as possible. On the wall right here for 3,000 points is the sickle. It's basically just a one-hit melee until round, I think it's eight or nine. So unfortunately, it's not very good right now since it's already round seven. It's a big investment. So unless you get a lot of points early, there's no real reason to pick it up. But boom, we want to take this Luna Lander all the way back to spawn. And that is now two out of three done. Now I will fast forward until I have the points for the next area. Remember if at any point you're getting overwhelmed, just come back to this area right here, right next to the PhD flopper machine and train around in a circle or figure of eight motion like as you are seeing right here, grouping up all the zombies, but not letting them hit you because if they hit you, of course, they'll like slow you down. And once they're all grouped together and you have enough safe distance between you and the zombies, and they've stopped spawning in. You want to go ahead and just start firing into them all. And boom, we now have one zombie left. Actually, we have two, so we'll melee this guy. All right, we now have one zombie left. So as you come out of the spawn, you will see on your left, there is a door right here. You want to go ahead and purchase this. It should be 1,000 points. Then you want to run all the way around here. Stamina will be right here which basically for 2,000 points, it lets you run super fast. It's a very, very good perk, especially if you're going to be practicing training. So to be honest, I highly recommend getting this because unlike other perks in this map, speed code is not really needed unless you're using a light machine gun, which of course is going to be really heavy and the reload is going to be a long time. But speed cola can definitely be an option, but you want to open this door right here and the final lunar lander will be just up here. So you want to call it into position wait around for around 20 seconds for it to actually land and then once it lands for 250 points you now want to do the final purchase of the lander it'll take you all the way back to spawn again and boom as you can see up here now pack a punch will be unlocked this basically means that the rocket area is fully charged up and you can now go there these lunar landers will be available as transportation throughout the map so if ever at any point you're in danger you can absolutely call one in and use it to get out of said area. But I'm going to fast forward to when we get to the Pack-a-Punch area, but I'm going to wait until I have exactly 5,000 points so we'll be able to showcase what Pack-a-Punching actually does. Okay, now remember every five rounds, we're going to get these annoying monkey rounds. Although this one actually spawned in on round nine, which is a bit sketchy. But you want to locate these monkeys as soon as possible before we start taking your perks. So as you can see, one's right here. I highly suggest if you want my advice to forego any other perks and just focus on maintaining the Juggernaug because that is absolutely the most essential. I mean, Quick Revive 2, of course, is useful, but you can definitely live without Quick Revive and repurchasing it is only 500 points. So right now they're taking Quick Revive. They're also taking PhD. They already took it, which is annoying. So yeah, they could be a bit frustrating, but 
Boom. We stopped them from taking our quick revive, which is good. So we want to drop down and go ahead and pick up this max ammo. Normally you want to reload before the max ammo because in all these games mentioned, max ammo won't actually automatically reload your gun, but it will give you maximum ammo. So we lost PhD flopper, which is a little bit annoying, but we could just go ahead and purchase that again for 2000 points. It's better to make sure you don't lose quick revive or juggernaut because those are probably the two most important perks on this map. If you lose a quick revive, even though I said it doesn't matter as much because it's only 500 points to rebuy, you'll then be unable to revive yourself again if you run out completely of quick revives. So absolutely focus on defending the quick revive and juggernaut perks above all others, because you can easily just go ahead and buy the other ones as many times as you want. So we now have enough to pack a punch. So in order to unlock the pack a punch, you want to come right next to where the power is, Press this button, it will activate the launch sequence, and this will actually send the rocket into the sky, which is pretty cool, so you can go ahead and just, like, watch as it happens. But this will basically unlock the door that takes you to the Pack-a-Punch area. So as you can see, the rocket's going bye-bye. Definitely very cool. And you want to go ahead into this room, which now, as you can see, the door has been lifted. And come around this corner, and boom, the Pack-a-Punch is right here. So for... Because we have PhD Flopper, I'm going to pack a punch my starting pistol. And as you can see right here, when you fire the shots, they actually explode. So it's really, really useful for taking out full hordes of zombies, especially if you don't have a thunder gun from out the box yet. Because this is definitely like, I guess, the second wonder weapon of the map, if you really want to consider that. But it's on every single map that has pack a punch and the M1911. I'm also going to showcase right now stamina up. So you go ahead and purchase this for 2000. Remember, you can only have four perks at a time. But as you can see, we have unlimited sprint and it means that we run a lot faster. And when playing this map, you want to avoid these little puddles here because when you walk through them, it actually slows you and you can't sprint. That could be a little bit annoying. And boom, let's just showcase the 1911s real quick. Let's get both these zombies together. Zombies boom, explosion. And they both just got completely destroyed. So I'm going to quickly showcase to you guys how to train using the 1911 starting pistols, which I highly recommend upgrading and just picking up this PhD flopper because it will make your life so much easier. And having to spin for the Thunder Gun can definitely be difficult because, you know, Realistically, you could spin the box 50 times and not get it once. Or you could spin it three times and get it on your third hit. So, this is definitely a more reliable way. You just get 5,000 points, pack a punch the 1911s once you've done all the Lunar Landers. But of course, you want to make sure you have a very strong secondary weapon. Like you saw, I got the Org from the box. Alternatively, you can keep using the MP5K. You could purchase like the AK-74U on the wall or something. Anything works as long as it can kill the zombies efficiently and ideally it's fully automatic so that you'll be earning enough points. So boom, all the zombies are together. One shot, two shot, and the entire horde was gone. So you really don't need to spam this gun at all. And remember, if you don't have PhD flopper and you're using this gun, you need to be very careful because the splash damage from firing the shots will actually hurt you. And of course, you wouldn't want to go down. And all that being said, that is essentially it for Ascension. So now we'll move on to the next map. And if you're wondering where Double Tap, the perk Double Tap is, which basically in Black Ops 1, it's only the 1.0 version. So it's not very good. But in order to obtain it, you either have to kill a monkey round to get the free perk without letting them hit your perks once or take a single perk, I believe. Or you can do like an Easter egg for it. But because this is a video designed for newer players and improving at the game, we're not going to worry about that right now. So let's go ahead and move on to the next map. So just in case people are wondering how to get on to town survival, you want to go ahead after clicking solo play, click the wheel here. Now, even if you don't have any DLCs, this should show up. You want to come to the second option here and click Survival. Now, from the moment that you spawn in, Pack-a-Punch will be staring you right in the face. So, like I was saying before, this map is absolutely perfect for learning how zombies works. So, over here, we've got the Stamina perk, just relaxing right next to the bar. We have an M14 on the wall, which we definitely do not need. One thing to note is that fire zombies take less shots to kill. They're definitely weaker. So you want to only shoot like twice and then knife. But remember, when you knife them or kill them, they will explode. So take a couple seconds and then go ahead and kill the next. Because you don't want to accidentally go down on round one because annoying fire zombies destroy you. So just two shots, knife. Oh, see, we got hit. So we want to back up completely because we don't want to accidentally go down. Health should have regened. Boom. Now, if the zombies aren't on fire, you can go ahead and shoot them a few times, knife. But the fire zombies always two shots and then knife. So you want to avoid this fire 
as well as the lava, because essentially it will just burn you until you take enough damage that you end up going down. So you want to completely avoid that. Try and jump over it if you can. In this little corner here, we have the Double Tap 2.0 perk, which unlike its predecessor, Black Ops 1, and of course World of War, Double Tap 2.0 not only increases your fire rate by double, but it also doubles your damage. So that's why it's an extremely crutch perk that you should definitely be buying every single game. So round two, six shots, knife. We have the box right here. We can go ahead and purchase this straight away. We actually got a sniper, which, you know, not ideal, but a hey, we make use of the tools we have. So we can go ahead and purchase the box again, just to get a better gun. Now, unlike Ascension, there is no PhD flopper. Okay, we got two snipers. <laughs> That's kind of funny. But there's no PhD flopper in Black Ops 2, sadly, other than in Origins. But on this map, there is no PhD flopper. So what you want to do is not use the starting pistol because it's too risky. You don't want to pack a punch for starting pistol at all, because when you pack a punch it, it becomes the Mustang and Sally, and it makes explosive shots every time you fire them. Yeah, it can one-shot a horde, but it's also going to be damaging you, and you fire twice and all of a sudden you're red screen. It's not going to be good. There's one doll right here that goes into the bar. Power will already be turned on as well, which is incredibly nice. I'm going to double points here, so we can go ahead and pick that up. Try and go for headshots, although using a sniper is definitely not the easiest. We've got a nuke here, so if we get double points nuke, we end up getting 800 points, which is definitely good. The bar is over there. Quick revive is upstairs, but because Juggernog is only behind one door, realistically, what you should be doing is come up here, buy this door for 750, and then Jug is right here. So we need 900 points, but as soon as we get that, we can purchase Jug, and then we take four hits to go down instead of two, which is much, much better. Now, if you get in a sticky situation, you can always drop down here, but remember that you're going to take fall damage, so you want to be careful and wary of that. Now, I actually don't have very good guns, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase this MP5, because otherwise, I'm not going to have a reliable way to kill the zombies, even when I purchase Jug. So you just want to sit up here for a little bit. Right on the edge of here is perfectly fine, because you can see all the zombies spawning. If you get overwhelmed, you just back up, drop down, and then you're safe. So we have a max ammo. What we want to do is wait a second to actually pick this up until we've used as much ammo as we can to maximize how much ammo we have. Once the zombies have pretty much gone, we want to pick it up. Boom, the round's done. We're going to nuke at the end of the round for another 400 points. And now all we need is 80 points to get Jug. We can go ahead and rebuild this barrier for 10 points each rebuild. There should be a barrier around this corner too. Boom, we now have enough. Purchase Jug, and life is just so much safer. So if you want, you can definitely stay up here until you gather enough points to be able to prepare for training. Because it's definitely very safe. The zombies can't jump up from behind you. They'll all be coming from this direction. The MP5 is right on the wall there for you as well. So if needed, you could just go ahead and purchase more ammo. Got a double points right here, which is going to help us immensely. And we're going to actually drop down because... Well, I was reloading and I didn't want to accidentally go down to that one zombie. That wouldn't have been very good. Got another max ammo here, which is huge. Go ahead and pick that up. Normally you want to reload before, but because I'm uh, a bit of an idiot, I didn't. We now have 3,000 points. So whatever you decide to purchase next is entirely up to your preference. Because I own the map Buried, the mystery box has the Raygun Mark II in it, as well as the Raygun Mark I. So you can absolutely go ahead and spin the box if you want. But what I personally suggest... Because the MP5 is definitely solid as a gun anyway, and if you hit the box and manage to get a pretty good gun beforehand, then I suggest buying Double Tap after Jug, because this will make you incredibly powerful. Now, just to showcase, we're going to go ahead and open up the bar right here. You want to come all the way upstairs. On the wall here is the Galvan Knuckles for 6,000 points. They one-shot melee until I believe round 13. So if you want to buy them, if you have enough points, like if you get really lucky double points early on, you can absolutely do that. And then you can one hit melee until round 13, which will give you a lot more points. But of course, remember to be careful because when you melee, you know, you're putting yourself in danger by slumming yourself. You can only kill one at a time too. But the quick revive machine is right here. So you want to go ahead and purchase this for 500 points if you're playing solo. As explained in previous maps, it just automatically revives you once you go down. You can repurchase it up to three times for a total of four downs, which is definitely very useful. And as you can see, with Double Tap 2.0, we're absolutely destroying these zombies. Like, it's only about two or three shots with the MP5 to kill them. And it's 
pretty much a one-shot headshot. Definitely a very solid setup for the earlier parts of this map. And we already have three out of the four perks because unfortunately there are no like three perks on this map unlike Ascension. You can only have up to four perks. So I highly recommend purchasing either Stamina Up, which is down there, or Speed Cola in there. Speed Cola will be right on the other side of that door, which makes it so that you reload your gun faster, which is really, really useful. And Stamina Up, in case you didn't see the previous part and you skipped towards this part, Stamina Up basically makes it so that you have a faster sprint and unlimited stamina. So you don't accidentally sprint around and then all of a sudden your stamina runs out and you're walking and you get stuck by zombies. So since we're pretty strong, we can go ahead and start training. You want to be careful when dropping down here because of course the zombies are right there. But the best training spot I found on this map is right here. Now there is fire, so you have to be wary of that. But you want to just run around like this and you should be fine. The only thing you have to be wary of is up here. The zombies can of course come from there. You want to be careful. Also, that little seat right there can be a real death trap if you're not careful. So try to avoid getting too close to that seat. Make sure there's enough space when you run past to be able to actually fit through. And yeah, this is basically all the game is going to be until whatever round you desire. So you can just go ahead, shoot into all the zombies when you have enough of a safe distance, and that entire horde just got destroyed. Now we have enough for Pack-A-Punch. We can just go ahead and do that right now. We'll Pack-A-Punch the MP5. Why not? You want to be careful when Pack-A-Punching because it is in the lava. So you want to take a few steps, Pack-A-Punch, and then come out. Wait for your health to regen a bit. And then go back into the Pack-A-Punch to pick up your gun. So now we have Pack-A-Punch, which makes our gun incredibly strong, even though it was already. Got an insta-kill as well. This map is definitely just the most solid for teaching you all the basics in a very, very short and easy fashion. You know, I've only been recording for about 10 minutes. We're already on round eight. No real sweat broken. You can absolutely do this for yourself as well. Now, I've played zombies for a very long time, so of course, coming very naturally to me, but there's nothing here that's absolutely difficult at all. The only thing that really requires effort is earlier on managing your points and making sure you get Juggernog as quick as possible to avoid downing. So we can go ahead and open this door for sure. Speed Cola is right here. Now it costs 3,000 points, so we can't quite afford it yet. Also be wary of zombies crawling through this little car here because they can actually do that, but they take a while, so you should be fine. The main things to worry about on this map are the fire zombies exploding when you shoot into them and accidentally running into the fire, as well as getting stuck on potential sticky situations when training in this area but it's probably the best spot i'm gonna hug the walls when necessary if you're getting in a sticky situation go ahead fire and run through like that that was actually really risky i should have probably looped back on myself but i was playing it a bit sketchy get a nice distance between you and the zombies fire into them all and boom they're all basically dead and now we have enough for speed cola we can go ahead and pick this up and as you can see, when we reload, it's just so much faster. Alternatively, you can, of course, purchase stamina up right here instead of speed cola if you don't mind the reload speed, like if you have a gun that reloads fairly fast anyway. And you can absolutely get that instead, and it will help training, make it a little bit easier since you'll be running faster. But yeah, that is basically it for the entire map. It's that simple, which is why I highly recommend it for learning the game. But one thing I will actually do, since we have a double points, we're almost at enough points to get it. Yep, there we go. We're going to go ahead and purchase Galvan Knuckles. We'll actually just be careful real quick. When coming into this corner as well, you want to be careful because when you drop down, you know, it's going to take you a little while to get back. And it can be a little bit risky since this is like the only way of getting through this area. But we want to go ahead and purchase Galvan Knuckles. So ideally, you do not want to be purchasing it on a round like this because this is pretty late, but it will be one shotting. So now I'll wait until insta kill runs out because obviously it's going to one shot anyway but it just empowers your melee and makes it so that you one hit until around round 13. i could actually be wrong about the round and if i am i'll be able to showcase it but yeah as you can see one hit melee now if you've got a full horde of zombies you want to be very very careful when you melee i suggest taking a small step back as well if you're meleeing into a full horde of zombies because you don't want to lunge forward and then boom you're stuck so whenever you don't need to melee, just go ahead and shoot into all the zombies. They all die. Da, da, da. Running a little bit low on ammo right now. So since we only have a sniper as our secondary, 
And we've only got a few zombies left. Go ahead and purchase the mystery box. And we got the executioner, a nice little pistol, like a shotgun pistol. Boom, round done. So for a gun like this, even though it's a pistol, you definitely want speed cola because the reload can take a while. As you saw right there, that was the Reagan Mark II before this sniper. Got the Python. Again, another gun that very much benefits from speed cola. I'll just cycle through a few weapons to show you guys what's actually in this map. We've got a 5.7. A nice little pistol as well. We seem to be getting a lot of pistols and snipers, but definitely not bad. But there are better guns in the box. Now we've got the hammer, which is an LMG. You definitely want speed cola if you're using this. But it's a very, very, very strong gun. One of the best on this map, outside of the ray guns themselves. And it has a fairly fast reload for an LMG as well. Now, once you hit the box enough, you will actually get a teddy bear, meaning the box will move location. And there are only two locations on this map. So as you can see, we've got the teddy bear. But the box will move upstairs in the bar. And when you start your game, it will either spawn in the bar or over there. Ideally, it will spawn over there because that way you can just go ahead and purchase the box without opening any doors. But if not, it's no biggie. The door's only 750. If you're really running low on ammunition or like good weaponry, then you can absolutely go ahead and buy this MP5 up here and focus on getting jug first instead of hitting the mystery box. But boom, box is right there. I'm going to showcase the melee real quick. Yep, still a one hit. Now, when opening up the other door to get a speed color, it actually opens up that door here too. So if you don't purchase speed color, you can leave this door shut completely. And I'll actually show you guys, but training in this little corner here can also be a good option. Because it's, a, it's fairly open. You know, you've got a couple spawns here, but it's definitely not the riskiest place in the world. You can run around in circles like this. And boom, all the zombies just pile up in front of you. Go ahead and spray into them. And it's as simple as that, really. So we can go ahead, pack a punch the hammer, remember? The fire, very dangerous. You want to back out. Wait for the Packet Punch to show the gun. Go back in, pick it up. And now you have your Packet Punch gun without accidentally going down when Packet Punching. Because if you go down, you can end up losing it because you might not get up in time to pick it up. So is it still a one-hit melee? Looks like it is. So I might have been wrong. It might actually be a one-hit melee until round 16. No, it's actually not. Okay, so the reason it's one-hitting the fire zombies right now is because, of course, they are weaker. So look, one hit and it didn't kill the zombie. So yes, it one-hit melees until round 13, but if they are a fire zombie, then it will still one-hit kill them. Go ahead, fire into them all. And that is basically it for town survival. So on to the next map. So, the giant. Firstly, I just want to say this map is absolutely gorgeous, but also... The spawn is definitely very, very solid for newer players. Now, I'm spawning in with the RK5 because I've done all the main Easter egg quests on the four DLC maps for Black Ops 3. So, for the sake of this video, I'll obviously only be using the MR6 because that would be cheating. It's no different than any other COD, except I highly recommend the Giant over any other because not only is Black Ops 3 overall a better zombies game, it is three hits to go down. So, boom, one hit two here and now we're red screen if this was black ops 2 world at war or black ops 1 we would be down right now just go ahead melee all the zombies we've got a nuke there remember when you melee back up a little bit so you don't accidentally pick up drops like this because on round one you know if you only get 400 points compared to killing the whole round and then getting the 400 points you end up with less points so all the zombies are here boom now we have 16 80 points we have an RK5 on the wall here. You know, for a pistol, it's definitely one of the better weapons. So if you need a gun straight away, you can buy it as soon as you spawn and it only costs 500 points. Very, very solid. The packet punch is right here in the spawn, but as you can see, it's locked. In order to unlock it, we have a teleporter over there, a teleporter over there, and a teleporter over there. Oh my God, and I'm not paying attention. Hello, zombie. Six shots into the zombie and then knife. Exact same as the other games as well on round two. You'll see that I can just remember this because I've played zombies so much that I kind of just off by heart know how the zombie health works. Six shots and knife. This way you're getting about 190 points per zombie kill. Now of course if they're starting to clump together and you accidentally shoot into them and it damages the ones behind it then it's no biggie but if you're aware of this I suggest just meleeing instead because it will be a two hit melee anyway. So as you can see right here we put six into him, but because the zombies behind are weaker, we'll fire two more shots and then just melee. Because otherwise, we might accidentally end up killing the zombie with a 
pistol shot, which is only going to give like 50 or 60 points for the kill. So it won't be as much. Now we have 3000 points. We've got one zombie left. So I suggest to you guys, as you can see, the mystery box is in this location here. It'll actually spawn randomly around the map, unlike Doris on World of War, which is always over there. But this is the best way I'm going to show you guys to play the map. So open this door here. We have a KRM shotgun on the wall if needed. We've got this door here. Double tap is the perk that spawned right here. Now this is completely random. You could have quick revive here. You could have who knows here. You could have speed cola here or I think mule kick as well. So perks will definitely spawn randomly. You want to go ahead and lie down underneath it. I already did it, but you get 100 points if you just lie down in front of the perk. And we have a door right here for 1000 points. Quick revive is right here. So if you want, you can go ahead and purchase this straight away. Remember to lie down next to the perk, get the most points. But you want to come over here, drop down. The power switch will be right against this wall. Go ahead and turn this on. And now all the perks will be available for you to purchase. Quick revive is always available to purchase, regardless of if the power is on, if you're playing solo. So it doesn't actually matter, which is good. Now, one of the perks is over here. I believe that is Mule Kick. You don't really want to worry about Meal Kick because frankly, it's like the worst perk across all these maps. There are definitely better perks for you to be choosing. So come all the way through here. Speed Cola is the perk that is right here. Go ahead, lie down next to it. And now we have 820 points. And now you want to come on over while you still have one zombie left, so it's safe. Again, you can definitely choose to buy Quick Revive if you want, but come around here. It could be a little bit risky around this corner, but Jug is right here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Juggernog is always in this area on the giant. Like, I think all the other perks change except for Juggernog. So it will always be in this location here. So you want to lay down by it. You can go ahead and save up for it. Get it on like round three or four, depending on if you get double points or not. But since for this gameplay right now, we only have a starting pistol because we're not counting the RK5. And the box is over there, but it's behind a door. So we can't actually afford to get there yet. So what you want to do is go ahead and purchase this KRM on the wall right here. It's a very, very solid shotgun. Shotguns in this game are extremely strong and you could definitely use this until whatever round you see fit. Remember, of course, there's no PhD flopper in this game, so I do not suggest packer punching the starting pistol because even though it's not a 1911, the MR6 does turn into like a similar thing to the Mustang and Sally. Move on to the next round. And for this round, I highly suggest that you guys stay over here. Don't open up this door just yet. All the zombies will appear right in front of you and they'll all be at a fairly good distance for you to shoot them with no real danger. Now the quirk of this map is every five rounds you'll get hellhounds. Hellhounds will basically mean that you get a free max ammo so they should really be treated as like a breathing space for you because they're not difficult at all. They're really easy to kill. If you let them overrun you then they can easily down you but only if you're not paying attention like Especially if you're standing here, which you should be on this round anyway. Of course, they're not going to spawn yet. They'll spawn on round five. But also, well, let's just showcase server so shotgun. One shot headshot. Two shots, four zombie kills. Very easy. Now, you won't have the attachments on your gun like I do. But really, the gun will perform the exact same anyway. You just want to stay here for a few rounds until you get enough points to purchase whatever perk you think is best first. Either Quick Revive or Juggernog. Personally, I would go for Juggernog, which means you'll need to stay here for a little bit longer because it costs 2,500 points. And again, on this map, like other Call of Duties, there are only four perks per map, which is a little bit annoying. At least on this map anyway. There are other ways you can get perks, but we won't be discussing them because there aren't really any on this map other than, I suppose you can unlock a perk machine, but realistically, you don't want to be using that anyway, because stamina up isn't really as essential on this map. But the reason I don't suggest it is it can either be stamina up or dead shot. It's completely random. And if it is dead shot, then you basically just wasted your time because dead shot makes it so that your controller snaps to the head. And if you're using keyboard and mouse, then it will make it so that your hip fire is like slightly more accurate, I believe. It's only 1500 points, but it's really not worth a perk slot. I highly recommend for this map, just getting Speed Cola, Quick Revive, Juggernog, and Double Tap 2.0. Those are your best four perks. Nothing else will be 
as efficient as those perks. Now we have 3,500 points. Remember when running under here to be careful because zombies can, of course, be on the other side of there. It's a very tight little hallway. So but since we want Juggernaut, we want to run all the way up here. We can also afford Quick Revive. So let's go ahead, purchase this right now. And then Jug is around this corner. Remember, it's risky because zombies can spawn here. So as you see here, kill the zombie first, then purchase Juggernaut. And boom, we're pretty set for the dog round. So we won't accidentally have like a silly down, you know. Now on this game, I know for certain that the last zombie on round four onwards will always be sprinting. I don't know why for some reason it wasn't doing that on Black Ops 1. But yeah, as you can see, sprinting, kill it, round ended. So it's a good way to know that you have the last zombie if you need to prepare by doing certain things. But this is actually your best training spot right here. We'll have this door open in the future because of course we need to unlock Pack-a-Punch and to do that there's a teleporter over there. But you want to just, like in previous maps, train around in this sort of area here. I highly suggest tapping sprint when you do this because it allows the zombies to group up a little bit more without letting them hit you. If you just directly sprint around in a circle, you know, you can get sloppy, you're not really focusing as much. So doing this definitely helps. Keep your focus and create enough distance between you and the zombies. Now, like on town with the little chair thing, this little set of barrels right here can be the death of you every single time. So you want to try and avoid going too close to them. But every other wall you can absolutely hug. Like this wall right here. And you want to run through whenever you see a big enough gap that you can fit through. Like right here there's a gap. You can run through there. Etc. Etc. Now all the zombies are together. I'm going to go ahead and fire all my pistol ammo into the zombies to maximize the amount of points that we get. You don't have to do this at all, but... For the sake of getting through this video as fast as possible and gaining as many points quickly... I'm going to do that. Every single zombie on the map is in this horde right now. So, boom, we're going to go ahead. Headshots. KRM should be one-shotting still on this round, so you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, and now we have one zombie left. 3,820 points. So, I'm going to show you guys all the teleporter locations. The first one, you open this door here. Mule kick right here. You can go ahead, lie down, get the free 100 points. Then we have the Bowie Knife here, which costs 3,000. One hit melees until, I believe, round 8. Definitely not bad at all. We have a KN-44 on the wall here. This is my personal favorite gun, and I highly recommend that you use this. This will be, like, the key for you to actually do well at this map. But as you see here, we link the mainframe. We actually have a couple zombies left, but we'll ignore them for now. You want to take it all the way back to spawn, where you literally spawned in. You stand on it when you spawn in, and you teleport link mainframe thingy and boom that's one done out of three and when you do this you'll actually spawn in a free power up so as you see here we've got a max ammo very very nice that'll happen every time you use the teleporter or you link the mainframe the next one will be right up here you have to run up these stairs just around the corner you have this door here and boom the teleporter is right there mystery box for me is right in this corner so we go ahead interact it's either F or X, or I think square if you're using a PlayStation controller. Run all the way back to spawn, rinse and repeat this. Boom, as you see, the door is slightly lowering each time you do this as well. Got a death machine. Now, the nice thing is death machine in Black Ops 3. Very, very solid, but you can actually just swap your weapon and it gets rid of it if you don't want to hold it. Definitely useful. So we're going to run all the way around here because this saves us having to buy this door from the spawn right here, which is 750 points. We have a door here, 750. Then we come around this corner to this door here, which is actually 1250. So we need to kill one zombie to be able to do this. Okay, there we go. I think you might be the last zombie. So we have enough points. We just go ahead, open this door. We run all the way up here. Link the teleport to the main frame, and then we run all the way back to spawn. Just like we have with previous ones. Now, this door is actually shut, so we have to be a little bit careful. So you want to jump and slide, jump and slide. Just jump first, then slide, or you can slide, then jump. Either works. But you go all the way around here, and we still have plenty of time. You get 30 seconds each time you do this. More than enough to be able to complete it. And we get another drop. We've got another max ammo, you know, nice, okay. But now the Packer Punch is unlocked. 
So since we didn't get dogs last round, we should be getting it this round. If it doesn't spawn in on round five, it'll be either round six or I think it can rarely spawn on round seven, but I'd be very surprised if that does happen for you. But yeah, here we go. Dogs will spawn in. You'll be able to hear them spawn. Your scream will like shake a bit. Whoa, that dog was like glitching. But look, the KRM one shots all the dogs. Most guns do one shot the dogs because they have very little health. They run fast, sure, but they're not that scary. And because this is Black Ops 3, you only get six per round anyway. Very easy to deal with. That's five. This will be the sixth one. And there's your max ammo. Literally the freest round in all of COD Zombies history. Now, if you want a very, very solid gun, you want to come up here. You need 1,400 points and buy the KN44. Now, obviously, I've got my attachments, but... This gun is by far the single best weapon on this map. Like, don't even bother hitting the box if you want, like, a really good gun gun. Because this is just the best one. Like, the KRM is very useful for getting you through the early rounds. You can literally use this KN44 until you get enough to pack a punch and then use it until the end of time. If you have attachments for it, then having the fast mags on means you really don't need to actually buy speed coda. Like, look at how fast that reload is. Literally almost instant. Even without, though, it's very quick. So you want to just shoot into all the zombies, aim for the head, ideally. We've got an insta-kill so we can get some melee kills for more points. And we're actually going to go ahead and buy our third perk, which is Double Tap. Double Tap being right here for me. Now, they can all alternate other than Juggernog. So right here, this is Speed Cola, but of course, for you, this might be Quick Revive. Whoa, what on earth is this zombie doing? Okay, man. Okay. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> well, that was uh, an interesting thing, I guess, to uh, put in the video. <laughs> what the heck? But yeah, as well, you could just go ahead, purchase ammo for 700. If you pack a punch, then purchasing ammo costs 4,500 points. So it is a lot more expensive. But since you'll have a lot more ammo and you're going to be doing so much more damage, it doesn't matter. But look, we're just one shot headshotting right now. Hell, it's like a two shot body shot. Very, very, very strong gun. And we could just use this until whatever round we really need to. Because Double Tap 2.0, of course, making it absolutely broken. Now, the wonder weapon of this map is the Wonder Wolf DG2, which you get via the mystery box. It's definitely a very solid weapon. It'll make your life a lot easier, but the fact that it's in the mystery box means you have to spend a lot to spin until you get it. So it's totally up to you if you want to go ahead and spin for it. You do not need it. If you want to be getting to round like 10 to 20, then just using the KN44 with double tap and using this training spot right here, you'll be perfectly fine. So I'm going to showcase to you guys how to do this strategy very easily. As you can see, the zombies are coming. You want to just slowly start walking around like this. We've got a gap here. We run through there. Now remember, if ever you get in a sticky situation, you can double back on yourself like this and then run in the opposite direction. Likewise, we run back. Make sure we're not getting stuck on any of the zombies, run through all the little gaps. And it's just that simple, really. And then you want to keep enough distance between you and the zombies so that you can fire into them, but not get snuck up on. So you can walk all the way back here if you want, and then all the zombies will just line up for you nice and easily. Because this strat is very, very easy, all you have to do to get bullets is just come on over to the KN44 up here. Purchase ammo for 700 and boom, you're done. Now, I'm not going to do this because we actually have enough points to purchase Pack-A-Punch. Now, we can also buy Speed Cola, so we'll go ahead and do that. So we just run on down to the spawn. We put our gun in the Pack-A-Punch and boom, the KN44 Pack-A-Punch. And this can be your gun until basically the end of time. It's, it's really solid. I mean, it'll stop being as effective probably about round 30-ish, but... If you're watching this video, then round 30 is going to be a very, very high round for you, I imagine. So don't worry about that whatsoever. If ever you get in a sticky situation doing that training spot as well, run all the way to this teleporter and for 1500 points, it will take you back to the spawn and it will give you a bonus drop. But look, one shot, headshot, completely one shotting, like... Two shot body shot as well. Very, very solid. This will easily get you past round 15, I'd say, with very little effort. Now, one thing I am going to showcase as well. So we'll go ahead and pick this nuke up. because This should end the round, probably, or at least leave only a couple left. Yep, there we go. It's back in spawn. This game, Black Ops 3, actually introduced double Pack-A-Punch. So if you put your gun back in the Pack-A-Punch for 2,500 points, you get what's called AATs, or alternate ammo types. So what we got on the bottom right, as you can see, is fireworks. So we've got dogs, so I don't think we can really showcase it on this round, but 
essentially, when we fire a shot, we have a very small chance to create a firework like effect which will kill all zombies around you. Now, you won't get points for this, which is a shame. But yeah, boom, as you can see, the dog round, very easy. But once you get it, it will fire around, kill all the zombies around you. And then it has like a 20 to 25 second cooldown. So it's just a little nice bonus. And it will one shot until round infinity. So alternate ammo types are really the good way to get beyond round 25, really. Or beyond round 30. The best two I would recommend are called Blast Furnace and Deadwire because those have a much lower cooldown, so you can continuously get them every so often. So if you get a full horde of zombies, fire one shot into them. Deadwire will kill like, I think six or seven, and then Blast Furnace will be around the same. So one bullet into seven kills over and over again, you know, you can really maximize the amount of shots you're doing. Plus the Kane 44, you just go buy ammo over there anyway. And that's how you really get into the higher rounds. So boom, we should get fireworks right here. Yep, there we go. Nice little firework effect, shoots all the zombies around you. Very good if you're in a sticky situation. Fireworks is definitely a safe choice, but because you don't get points and because it's not really the best past later rounds compared to dead wire and blast furnace, it's not usually my choice. But if you're a newer player, absolutely consider fireworks because it's probably going to be one of the best choices. Like, look, all of those zombies is gone. And you can repack a punch as many times as you want, so don't worry about like, oh, oh no, I got like fireworks on my gun, I can't get another one. You can actually just repack a punch again and it will alternate between a different one. So we got Thunderwall. Arguably, this is the worst one. It's similar to fireworks in a way, but it just doesn't kill as many. And yeah, as you can see, <laughs> it only killed one zombie. It didn't even kill the one next to it. Also, another thing you need to make sure you're wary of is because this door is open now, the zombies will come from, yep, as you can see right there. So be very careful when training around. You've got a lot of space to work with. Like it's a very long vertical open area. So as you can see, zombies spawning here. Ooh, a bit careful there, but we managed to do it. You can also train in this spot here if you'd like. It's a little bit riskier because I think the zombies can drop down above you, but you can train up in this little area here. It's also quite open. It's basically your personal preference. I prefer over there because it's right next to the electric trap as well. So I didn't really mention traps in this video because I'm kind of trying to teach core gameplay mechanics, not, you know, something doing the killing for you, but if you activate it, it basically just zaps all the zombies for around, I don't know, 20 seconds or so that walk through it. It'll be like those little stick things you can see over there. It just all of them become electrified. So it's definitely useful, but yeah. We're using one clip of the KN44 Packer Punch right now, and that was basically all the zombies. 27 shots <laughs> and the entire horde just gone. And imagine if we had alternate ammo types as well. Another training spot you can also do is right here in the spawn. Zombies will climb up here, so you have to be a little bit careful, but they take a long time. So you can just do a figure of eight motion right here. And all the zombies will be right behind you. You just got to be careful to run through the gaps like there. You're right next to the RK5 as well. So if, you're, if that's the gun you're using that's pack-a-punch and has dead wire, you just run up here, purchase ammo, and then run around. Fire once into them, and you know, I have fireworks, so it kills all of them. But if you have dead wire, it would absolutely just destroy all of them, or at least like seven or eight zombies. It would just destroy like seven or eight zombies, which is very, very nice. So we got turned. Now, this one, as you can see, it turns a zombie into a friendly zombie. Now, this is honestly a really, really, really good alternate ammo type, especially for newer players, because it lasts for about like 15 to 20 seconds. He'll one shot all the zombies until whatever round you want. And after a while, as you can see, he just dies. But the downside is not only do you not get points, but you also don't get XP because in Black Ops 3, you have a leveling system. So you get up to 35 levels, then you can prestige, then you can, you know, similar to multiplayer. If you've ever played a Call of Duty multiplayer, but we're not going to really talk about that because it's kind of like micro knowledge that you don't really need. And we got dead wire. There we go. So now I can showcase. We're not going to worry about Blast Furnace because it's basically the exact same thing and Dead Wire is the best option. So you want to train in the usual spot right here. Get a full horde of zombies together. Nice and carefully, you know, making sure you're keeping an eye out for when zombies are spawning around these corners just so you don't get trapped. And when you get a lot of zombies together, you fire once into them and look, stuns majority of them and kills around eight zombies. Now we're in a bit of a sticky situation here. Ooh, we almost went down. Okay, that's the closest we've come in one of these videos, actually. So that was a bit risky. I should have waited for all the zombies to come together first and then fire into it with dead wire because that way you're not going to get zombies sneaking up behind you. But that's more or less how it works. Now, 
On round 16, as you can see, we have a dog in the middle of the zombie round. Now, this will start to happen. It's not really too big of a deal. Like, it's not that bad. But when the dogs start to spawn in, you know, it can throw you off and all of a sudden you've got a, a dog in the middle of your training spot. So that's how training kind of becomes a little bit more difficult as the rounds progress after round 16, but it shouldn't be too bad for you. So again, we get a full horde together. This time I'll get an entire full horde and not just like half a horde to show you guys. You just keep running around in circles until all the zombies have spawned in because you don't want to accidentally do what I did and get red screen and nearly go down. But it's perfect that that happened because now I can actually show you guys what not to do. So we've got all these zombies together. I think this is all of them. Yep, no more are spawning, so we fire once and we get about seven or eight kills. And then you can keep training, wait for more zombies to spawn in and then fire into them again. Or you can just fire again like that. Like, look at the cooldown on that. Like, so fast and just kill so many zombies for one shot as well. Boom, another shot, eight more zombie kills. Remember, it does stun them, so you want to be wary of that when training around. You've got a little gap here. You want to woo, double back on yourself. That was a bit risky, but we're okay. Boom, we've got a full horde together. One shot. Well, there's actually two, but yep, eight zombie kills. Actually, to double check, I'm going to see, because this is basically exactly what the Wonder Wolf would do anyway. So Deadwire kind of nullifies the Wonder Wolf because you could just make any gun a Wonder Wolf. But as you can see, I have 346 kills, one shot, and we now have... 355, so it's actually 9 kills per shot, which is definitely very good. And it's like a 4 second call now. Yep, and it's back up. And the round is done. And that is it for the giant. So hopefully you found this useful. The single best piece of advice I can give outside of the maps themselves is to set small goals. Instead of thinking, why can't I get to round 20 or round 30, whatever goal you're setting, be less harsh on yourself for how skilled you currently are at the game. If your highest round of all time is round 12, then don't set a goal of round 20 or 30. Set a goal of round 13. Then, once you surpass it, keep slowly increasing it until you eventually reach a round much higher than you ever could have anticipated beforehand. I hope newer Zombies players can find this video helpful and learn the game as a result. I fell in love with Call of Duty Zombies at a young age and have stuck by with it ever since. Just remember, if at first you don't succeed, don't give up, try and try again. I wish you the best of luck learning this super fun game. Frankly, no matter what happens in the future of Call of Duty Zombies as games release, I will always have so much passion for it and continue to make content for the rest of my time on YouTube. Leave a comment if you have any questions regarding aspects of the game I may not have mentioned that would help you learn, or any part you don't quite understand and need some more detail on. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day or night.